Hi, Brian. I guess I should probably stay muted, so I'm going to mute my camera. I mean my microphone. Hi, this is Brian, and uh, we are excited that you are jumping on. Uh, I see a, a, quite a few of you getting on here, getting going. Um, if you can hear me, uh, Travis, can you see me and hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Everything's coming through. Awesome. I'm in my studio in my house, and so I'm excited to, uh, to be here today. Um, we will get started in just a few minutes as people jump on. Um, it's going to be an exciting evening as we learn about our defenders and what Family Policy Institute uh, is going to be working on. And so we have a number of different presenters that are getting on here and getting going. Uh, welcome. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of you get on here uh, as you get going. So um, we'll be starting here in just a few minutes, about seven o'clock straight up. But we just wanted to welcome you to Family Policy Institute of Washington. So um, we'll be here in just a few moments. I see quite a few of you jumping on. And so uh, in case you haven't used Teams before, uh, there is a question and answer area that you can uh, type in your questions and your an uh, we'll give you some answers there. Uh, Travis will be monitoring those. Uh, it's at the top, you'll see chat, question answers, uh, people raise your hand, that kind of thing. Um, and so just feel free to um, type in your question and answers. Also, this is what's exciting is I pre-posted some PDFs in the chat. So if you want to get our annual report or the little booklet that we'll be talking about tonight, uh, you can download those in the PDF under the chat. There's two files that you're going to see there. Um, but we're excited. Many of you are jumping on here. We'll start at 7 o'clock exactly um, and, uh, and let you know. So. Um, again, this is a recorded session, so uh, we're recording it for someone who couldn't make it tonight, um, but we wanted to thank you for coming uh, and, and letting us know. So if someone wants to try out that question and answer, go ahead and type it in there, and uh, I'll see your question um, come up, So, um, and, and we'll, we'll know. So I'll just do an example. Welcome. Welcome. And let me post that up there. Uh, Travis did it too. He beat me to it. Good job, Travis. And so Travis will be monitoring those questions and answers as we go. Uh, I do know I can talk uh, pretty fast at times. So feel free to raise your hand if you want to ask a question or that kind of thing. Um, quite a few more of you jumping on as we go. Um, good job. Um, we have uh, a number of different things we're going to be going through tonight in our Defender Program and Family Policy Institute, where we're going for 2024. It's going to be an exciting, exciting year. 
Uh, and so we're just excited that you are uh, taking the time tonight. We're thankful that you take the time tonight to come and just uh, be a part and to learn what Family Policy Institute of Washington is doing. This is our first time trying this as an end of a year project. And so we're excited uh, to, to give it a go and uh, to try it out. So again, if you're just jumping on, I see the numbers just keep going up and up uh, under people. If there, you'll see a chat button under that chat button. If you want to uh, chat as we go tonight, feel free to do that. Also, I pre-uploaded uh, two P PDFs, our annual report and our Defender um, booklet. Um, which lays out the vision for 2024. So if you'd like to download those, you can feel free to do that. Also, there's a uh, question and answers. Uh, Travis will be looking at that and uh, monitoring that. Welcome to FPIW. Uh, if you have discussions that you want to have there, um, uh, that would be great. The question already came in. Any way to see who's already attending? Uh, this is brand new to us. And so all I see is a number. Um, I don't think we can show who's attending. I think it's private at this point, but that is a great question. I appreciate it, Mr. Anonymous. Uh, Anonymous. So um, good job. I'll give you a thumbs up there. But many more of you are jumping on as we get going tonight. Um, across the top, at least on my screen, there's a, que a chat, question, answer. There's people. You can raise your hand. Um, and uh, and see, um, uh, yep, I have uh, it turned off on cameras tonight. So um, anyway, I'm Brian Noble. I'm the executive director at Family Policy Institute of Washington. And we have others on as well from our organization. Uh, it's gonna be a great time tonight. So um, jump on in there and uh, across the top, oh, the number keeps going up. We'll just wait so one more minute and we'll get started. Let me start by sharing my screen to make sure that's going to work for us. Uh, it's always an adventure, as you know. Um, so, um, Travis, if you can give me a thumbs up if you're seeing the, all right, you're seeing the the PowerPoint there. So, welcome in there. Um, Travis is going to be monitoring uh, our our um, question and answers tonight. So, I'm going to bring him on the screen uh, just down over here on the on the left. Um, at least my left, and uh, you'll be seeing, uh, if I look this way, it's just because I'm looking at another screen. So let's open in a word of prayer, and we're going to get started. Um, there's many more jumping on. We have our chat and our question and answers. Uh, Travis will be monitoring that, and uh, it will be a, a great time tonight. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for all that you want to do tonight, God, how you want to move in our hearts and our minds. God, we do pray for the state of Washington. We pray for a, a change, God, that it will go back to uh, biblical values that we'll see our constitution upheld and that uh, our children will be protected, God. And we thank you for all that you want to do and in, in, in our hearts and our minds that you entrusted this time to us uh, for such a time as this. And uh, Lord, we ask that you would um, go before us in all things. And so we just give you this evening and uh, our time together, and we ask that you would bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So uh, welcome to Family Policy Institute of Washington. I'm Brian Noble, the executive director, um, and I am very glad that you are here. Um, and so let me introduce our staff to you. Uh, this is Travis Pardo, and he is our research fellow and office manager. He does a lot of, of the behind the scenes of researching for us and helping me with my writing and and uh, doing his own writing as well. And so we're excited to have Travis on our team. We also have Rose and Rose is our human resource slash bookkeeper. And you might uh, make a donation or you may do something like that. You may hear Rose's name come up. And so I just want you to have a picture, a face to go with that, uh, that name. She follows up with all that. Uh, we have Judy, she does a lot with our data and special projects and coordinating our volunteers. And so, um, that's Judy Featon. And then we have Ken Ramey. He's our director of church relationships. He works with our pastors, our elders, our deacons, our church staff, and to help them uh, grasp the idea that the church is to be salt and light in the public square. And so that's Pastor Ken Ramey. And we have Keith Adams. He's our grassroots outreach. Um, you can say a prayer for Keith. He's He's been a little bit sick lately, and 
and uh, he needs our prayers. And so, uh, but he does everything that you would think about grassroots, the local level, working with those. He's done a lot of crisis and education seminars, uh, those kind of uh, items to educate the population uh, of Washington State about what's happening in our school systems. Then we have Brad Payne. He works with our legislators, our House representatives and senators, and uh, to really bring them along um, as we go. So these are some names that you may hear um, uh, as you work with Family Policy Institute of Washington, and we oftentimes call it FPIW. And so our, our motto is very simple. It's to defend and advance biblical values in the public square. And so um, just want to encourage you to, um, to know that that's what we do. Together, we can defend and advance biblical values in the public square. For some reason, Travis, when I brought up my PowerPoint, uh, I lose the the screen of uh, what's happening. So if you're if you're someone's going to raise their hand, uh, they're going to have to let me know. Okay, you just got to unmute yourself and um, and let me know. So um, that's what we do. We defend and advance biblical values in the public square, and we do this uh, basically with a three prong approach. Our directors are that three prong approach. They we're going to work on the church and saying, how can the church be salt and light in the public square? God calls us to do that. He doesn't just want us to be salt and light uh, inside the walls of our church, but really to take the gospel message into every aspect of our culture, our society, our world around us. And so think about this. Um, we have the best message in the world. That's why it's called the good news. And we can take that out into whether it's government, whether it's arts or medical, or whether it's uh, the, the, the nonprofit or uh, for-profit business just down the street. We can take that into the public square and Family Policy Institute of Washington wants to be there to help you do that. And why do we want to do that? We know that when we have smaller government and government that is less of, of oppressive, that we begin to see that our people can be free to worship God, that the gospel message can go out like, like never before. So oftentimes I'm asked, uh, what, what is a root Bible verse that you like to use? And I like this one. This comes from Isaiah 59, verses 14 through 15. It says, justice is turned back and righteousness stands far away. For truth has stumbled in the public squares. Uh, if you're reading like New King James or uh, NASB, it's going to say truth has stumbled in the streets um, or in the, um, you know, in the common places and uprightness cannot enter. So look at justice is turned back and righteousness stands far away for truth has stumbled in the public squares. This is where, as the body of Christ, we get the opportunity to step and move forward into the public square and be salt and light. I'm oftentimes asked, it, you know, sh the church shouldn't be political. And I 110% agree, we should not be political, but we need to be stewards of every aspect of the public square. I like what uh, Jack Hibbs says. Uh, he said that God created government. And when man didn't want government, uh, didn't want God in government anymore, he created politics. We don't want our government to be without God. In other words, we want moral people to be running our nation, to be running our city councils, to be running our school districts. We want people with good moral conduct to be doing that. We also want our, our uh, people to be salt and light. In Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 29, 7, it says, uh, and this is when they're in ex exile, it says that pray for the city that you're in, because when you see the peace or the shalom or the benefit of that city, uh, happening, you will experience that benefit as well. And so there's this engagement, even in the point of exile, that we have about being citizens of heaven uh, on this earthly place where we take care of those uh, areas so that why it benefits our neighbor. All right, let's continue on. Truth is lacking, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Look at that. So it says that truth is lacking. We're living in that day where truth is lacking. And when we depart from evil, when we try to tell the truth, uh, we become a prey and people don't like it. Um, they don't like it for us to say that uh, marriage is supposed to be between one man and one woman. We don't like it that when we say people say don't like it when we say there's two genders, there's male and female. They don't like it when we say that there's one way to heaven. That's through Jesus Christ. Um, and so we know that this truth is stumbled in the public square and that we need to do something about it. So when you when you look at this, this scripture, you think about it, it really begins to uh, enlighten you. Like, how do we get truth back into the public square? That's that's into government. 
that's into the medical fields, that is into arts, that's into every aspect of, of, of the public square um, that we can, we can um, think of. And the fact is, I'm asked often is, isn't uh, Washington state too far gone? And I, I, I wanna pause here on this one because um, I think it's incredibly important that we understand that um, the public square is not too far gone. Um, think about the Old Testament when David and Goliath um, came up to, you know, came into being. And Goliath is standing there. He's provoking the living God. And um, what does David do? He says, you come at me with a sword and a spear, but I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Think about that for a moment. So we, we don't give up. We don't hunker down. We don't retreat. We try to um, continue to bring righteousness everywhere we go, the gospel message everywhere we go. Um, be, why? Because we have been entrusted to steward this moment. Think of Esther and, uh, and the book of Esther. What, is it, what does her uncle say? Her uncle says, Esther, you have been entrusted for such a time as this. And if you don't, if you remain silent, that's okay. God will find someone else, but God's going to take care of it. And that's where we can be people. We don't have to be rude or obnoxious or unbecoming, but we can simply speak truth in love to our neighbor and begin to engage the public square. So we, I don't, I don't believe in defeat of it, being a defeatist. I don't believe in being a victim. I don't believe that we say Washington State is too far gone. I was born and raised in Washington State, um, and uh, and it is my home state. Um, and I lived in Sandpoint, Idaho, for just a little bit uh, as a pastor up there. But I, I came back. One of the reasons we came back with my family is because of what what we need to do as a state to move us forward. And so to really think about regaining ground in our state. And so I, I believe that's incredibly important. Okay, so our state isn't too far gone. When we, when we look at this, we see if we remain angry, unforgiving, polarized, and apathetic, then we're going to have a problem. And I want us to hear this, that at some point, we need to work together as the body of Christ and get beyond our unforgiveness or being polarized um, between each other and saying, hey, we don't agree on every one of these things. We need to come to the point where we can come together and put aside most of our differences and say, you know, hey, we want to have a biblical worldview. We want to see our state and our city taken back for the glory of God. And, and, um, and we don't want to be apathetic. I came across a stat this last week that 900,000 Christians didn't vote this last year. 900,000. That means if every Christian just began to steward what God has entrusted, the freedom that God has entrusted to them, they would begin, uh, we would begin to win every single election. But apathy has sat in and has, um, has taken root there. So we want to move forward and make sure that we're not uh, giving into being apathetic. So we are looking for 1.7 million conservatives to rise up and defend our state. We believe that they are there in, inside of our state. We know that the Democrats and or liberals have about 2 million. And we believe that uh, if we look at the numbers that we should be able to find 1.7 million um, to, to begin to rise up. Now, how this happens is, is that obviously the 2 million or the 1.7 million, we know that they won't all vote at the same time. They may not all, um, you know, interact at the same time. So we need a big number uh, so that we can see the public square begin to be changed um, and to see our, uh, our, our culture and our societies changed um, in such a way that we take it back. Um, when we look at our vision, it's very simple. It's a state where authentic biblical values flourish and people are free to live out their faith in their workplace and community. Let me read that again. A state where authentic biblical values flourish and people are free to live out their faith in the workplace and community. Think about what we just went through with COVID. Um, we, we had a government that decided to shut down the church, and yet they kept open um, you know, other areas, whether it be strip joints or whether it be pot shops or whether it be grocery stores or big farm, you know, big uh, box office places. And we need to come to the place where we understand that us assembling together 
uh, as it says in Hebrews, is a, a mandate from God. The church is essential. Every person on here is essential. And so to understand that we can create a place, why do we want to do this? It's not that we want to make a theocracy. I, you know, people are throwing around Christian nationalists everywhere we go, as if we want to have some kind of uh, theocracy to take place. No, we want a division of power where moral people rule and where people who have, you know, the foundations of our constitution and the foundations of scripture begin to have justice once again. And so that's not a theocracy. That's just a stewardship um, issue. And so to, to back up and say, we can do this, we can see um, God begin to move and we can have workplaces. So my point about the the COVID experience was they shut us down. It wasn't free to live out their faith in their workplace and community. And so when you think about that, you think about how has this happened? Well, it's because the church has relinquished its its authority and saying no, and trained our people to be courageous individuals and courageous people. Um, we have stepped back and said, it's a, you know, be timid, be fearful, and we need to encourage them to to move forward and to not. Um, be timid any longer. All right. Let's see. We have some questions here. I'll pause here. Um, let's see. Anonymous here says, I don't know it was biblical values while I was plotting, defending, advancing God-given rights, and the truth isn't imperative to work with many people. Let me see if I can see what the question is. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's a great question. Like, the biblical values that we're talking about are the same biblical values our founders uh, used when they wrote the Constitution of the United States, that that we're all human beings, that God created every person uh, as valuable. Um, you know, the old song, what we used to sing when we were uh, kids, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. God loves all people, and we want equal justice under the law. That is a biblical principle, that God created and uh, instituted marriage. Um, that we, that would be a biblical value between one man and one woman, that we see that the family unit is to be the parents that um, that parent their children. That would be a biblical value um, that we would want to embrace, um, and that the government isn't to be become the parent. Uh, Travis, anything else in there that you want me to uh, try to answer real quick as, before we go on? Keep going. No, we're good. Keep going. Yep. That's great. All right. All right. So this is our vision. And uh, uh, I just want to make you familiar that, that we are going to defend the sanctity of life. Um, we believe that life starts at conception. When a sperm meets an egg, we, egg, we have a, uh, a child and uh, life starts at conception. And so we want to defend that for unapologetically defend that uh, that stance. We believe it's biblical in Psalm 139. It says, uh, I formed you in your mother's womb. Jeremiah says, before you were formed, I knew you. And so the idea that God gives life and it starts at conception. We also know that in God challenging Israel, he says, choose this day who you will serve, choose life or death. And he tells them to choose life. And so a biblical worldview is that we should always choose life. And whether that is at the end of someone's uh, life, um, like maybe they're they're getting older or they're disabled, we at Family Policy Institute believe that a biblical worldview would say we don't um, use euthanasia or other means to end life uh, prematurely. So marriage, I've mentioned this, but we believe it's between one man and one woman. And so uh, we are going to defend marital rights. Uh, within our state, um, making sure that marriage is encouraged. I, I don't know if many of you are following the birth rate as of right now, but um, we know that any nation to have a healthy birth rate needs to be about 2.1 or 2.2. And um, we see that across the United States, we're about 1.7. Now, if you follow birth rates across the world, you, you would know that Japan is at 1.2. And they say, I'm, I'm not sure if how accurate this is, but they say about 1.3, if a nation falls between uh, below that number, that that nation will eventually go um, extinct because they will no longer be able to produce the number of children that go that correspond to the death rate of adults. And so marriage is incredibly important. You say, why, why is this a biblical worldview? The Bible is clear. At the very beginning of creation, God said, uh, be fruitful and multiply. 
cultivate and keep this earth. And he did, he said that because that is our mandate that we have uh, as believers. We also believe in the biblical value of religious liberty, that um, that we are a, a nation that is to provide religious liberty to um, all people, even people who don't believe in our uh, in Christ and Christ alone. They should have the freedom to to do what they need to do um, or want to do. Um, we know that a nation uh, that we were founded on Christian Judeo uh, principles and that our constitution was uh, written on those uh, biblical principles. And we can we will be doing more classes on this in the future. Um, but to really know that religious freedom is a hallmark for all nations, that we should be able to worship the Lord uh, as we uh, fit. And finally, one of our, our uh, foundational items is parental rights. The parents should have the right to raise their children. And uh, we need to do what is good for children and to realize that um, that children, God created them in his image and uh, that they are um, how he created them, that we are not to change that through gender reaffirming care and I'm putting that in quotations. Um, we are to truly love all children and protect children and parental rights. So our mission is to unite, represent, educate, and equip Washington legislators, pastors, and citizens to knowledgeably speak out on authentic biblical values, public policy, and bills in the public square. Um, bills impacting individuals and families within the public square. So we have started something that we're calling our defenders, and this is the 1.7 million that we are um, going after. And these defenders, we're asking them to pray. We know that uh, every battle that we go into in the public square is first and foremost a spiritual battle. The scriptures are clear, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and forces of this dark world. And so we need to uh, be prayer warriors. And so I'm going to show you on the website our prayer wall and um, and those kind of things. Now, some churches may be reluctant. This is the this is the place they want to stop is prayer. That is fine. It's absolutely powerful. If, you, if this is all you can do, and that's what you feel comfortable with, this first step, that's okay. We hope to move you to where we uh, vote our biblical worldview, that uh, as pastors, leaders, elders, as deacons, as community leaders, leaders, and small business owners, as those in our executive legislative branches of government, um, our city councils, those kind of things, that they will vote uh, from a biblical worldview, that we would defend life, that we would protect marriages, that we would give parental rights, that we'd have a biblical uh, religious freedom uh, view. Uh, we want to sign initiatives and referendums that um, align with those biblical worldview. Uh, recently, we had uh, SB 5599, which was uh, protecting parental rights and that the state couldn't uh, parent the child and um, give uh, gender reaffirming care unbeknownst to the parents. Now, I know I'm oversimplifying that, uh, how I just worded it, and I, I would encourage you to go and read it. But the fact is, um, they could step in and and uh, keep their a child away from a parent who um, wants to have this type of uh, treatment that could be mutilating to his body or her body and um, and not let the parents know. So that referendum failed by about 6,000 votes, um, to, or 6,000 signatures, or 7,000 signatures right in that area. And um, all we had to have is one or two more churches step up and say, I'll do this. Uh, it, it really uh, broke my heart, but I do know that we are going to get there where we can operate as one and then engage and, uh, in the public square by taking action. Uh, this may be um, letting your voice be heard on the legislative branch. If you're a small business owner, this may be um, you know, standing uh, for what's right in your, in your place of uh, business that God has entrusted to you. Uh, maybe if you're in the arts, this is being salt and light in, in the arts, uh, whatever it may be, but you take action um, that we that will defend and advance biblical values in that public square. So um, I'm going to go to our website here and just show you some of the, the updates um, that that we have going on. So this is uh, Family Policy Institute of Washington, uh, FPIW.org. And you can either get to this one of two ways. You can uh, click on this little thing and go to resources and, and get to it here. Um, or you can scroll down and find some very interesting things down here. Um, so Family Policy Institute of Washington, Advancing Biblical Values in Public Square. 
So if you want to find out more about the Defender program, you click on this link here, more info on FPIW Defenders. And actually, um, you're going to see parts of this presentation in there. Um, but you go down here and you can fill out this form. This is defining what I just explained. Uh, general online fillable form and uh, become a defender. How this helps is, is when Brad uh, Payne, our, um, uh, our director over the legislative branch, uh, uh, government affairs, walks into um, a senator's office or walks into um, something, uh, you know, uh, House Rep's office, and we have a no the numbers behind us, 1.7 million. This helps us to really have clout when we walk in. And so that's where we're trying to get that number. We also will be developing an app to mobilize these individuals uh, as we go uh, forward. Another uh, tool that we have in here is that uh, Defenders Pray. So here's our prayer wall. Um, you can start uh, become a Defender Intercessor. And uh, right now this is pretty generic, but when we go into session, uh, we will have uh, this updated with different prayer requests uh, from our sheriff's offices, our judges, our law enforcement, you know, things that we're seeing in the in the culture or the society that we want to begin to take care of. Our house reps, our senators, we'll just have different things that you can have your prayer teams begin to uh, pray over um, the public square. And then finally, our public square ministry. Um, so maybe some of you want to start um, within your church, um, a public square ministry. Uh, so we can all agree that parental rights are under attack, life is under attack, um, churches are under attack, education. Uh, so we need defender churches. And so we've created a, a logo here for you that you can just put your church name in here. You download this and you instantly have a public square ministry logo. And then we have a number of small group series that people can go through. Vote the Bible, Actions in the Public Square, Defending Life, um, why vote? Just preach the gospel. And these are handling objections that we hear uh, from the pastor's corner, defending life, uh, written testimony. I'll go over this in just a moment. Testify in person, testify remotely, and register position. So um, when you when you go into these things, we, you can begin to teach this in small group series. And there's going to be more coming. We're writing it right now for these small group series. You can write your strategy of how to engage the public square and then really look at your prayer warriors, what intercessory prayer strategy you might have, um, and then how to take action. Um, so if you want to take action in the public square, um, this is a, a site that will um, take you right, right to that spot. And so that you can begin to, um, to see, let me go up here real quick. Defenders, uh, resources, uh, take action. There we go. So we teach you how to register your vote, and you can download this and uh, figure that out really fast on on how to um, how to register a pro con, how to testify in person, and so we're teaching. And videos are coming on this as well, and so we're building this all out to equip the church. Uh, and and our our conservative uh, family to um, operate within the public square. So I know I'm like a fire hose, and and this is going to go really fast, but we're trying to keep this uh, pr pretty short. So um, any any questions on on that as we go, Travis? Yes. Uh, one question is. Uh, as the new executive director, Brian, what are two of your top priorities? What are two things that you're very passionate about in your vision? Yeah, so the two top priorities is one is, uh, and, and um, I'm going to get this in, a, in, in a just a moment, but is getting um, churches activated to understand the need for public square engagement. I feel like we've kept the gospel within the walls of the church and we need to take the good news of Jesus Christ as death, burial, resurrection, and appearance into all areas. And so I know that Family Policy Institute is oftentimes working on policy uh, to do that, but I believe it needs to be every area, whether it be arts, whether it be music, whether it be business. So uh, empowering pastors to do that, that's number one. Number two is practical steps like the app and the website so that people can do this 
I mean, I understand that as conservatives, we have busy lives, but we've been entrusted to steward these things. So I want to do practical tools. Uh, the app is going to be incredibly important to do that so that people like Brad, my executive director on the um, executive, uh, on the legislative side can communicate with millions of people quickly to let them know what we can do in, in certain areas. So uh, church engagement and and then simple technology that will, will mobilize us to move quickly. Any other questions, Travis? That's great, go ahead. All right, so again, if you're just, uh, there's more of you have been jumping on by the chat, the question and answers are there. Um, so let's talk about um, infrastructure. And this infrastructure is three things. We want to create an app, and I actually just had an interview with someone who, um, I'm trying to think if I should share their name and who, what they've done. But I'll just say we, we will all know uh, this organiza uh, organizations that he's helped. And so um, that we would create an app that we can deem your phone for prayer and or instant engagement and action from the public square to register your pro con um, as we go. So we have a structure and a strategy. And if you download that booklet, which was in the question and answer section, um, you will see that strategy laid out. We also need to make sure that we take the initiatives that we've had uh, signed and we empower the conservatives who have signed those initiatives. And so it's it's uh, getting that information um, solidified if we can and allowing it to be used uh, so that we can um, make sure that people are moving forward. Um, Ken is going to talk in just a few moments about the church strategy. I will talk about the grassroots strategy, um, uh, grassroots strategy, and then Brad will talk about the policy uh, strategy. So again, our goal is 1.7 million conservatives to rise up in our state, and we really believe that we're going to need everyone, um, whether they're more of a constitutional list and maybe they don't love Jesus yet. Uh, individual or they're uh, a sold out born again jesus loving person who just loves to be free um we need all of us to to be involved in that so um that this will be about 1.7 million to do that let me switch back over here um travis can you tell me if everything's working good yes it's working very well okay i just had someone text me and they thought it was frozen so um, so this is our Defender program, and I want to remind us of Second Chronicles 7.13. It says, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land and send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So prayer is going to be key as we move forward um and and talk through um what we're doing um and we need to have the technology to do that quickly so we started with the the online uh web portal um of our prayer wall and we'll move that into uh, an app so let's break down this infrastructure fpiw app um we we believe that's going to cost us right around two hundred thousand dollars to build uh as we pay it out um, data and database that could be about 200,000 as well, 250, and then ballot boxes in every church. So this is the uh, the the um, core of what we want to do from an infrastructure uh, perspective. Um, I'm going to bring on Ken, and he's going to talk about. Um, hopefully, Ken is the one that texted me that he was frozen. So hopefully, he's unfrozen. Um, he's going to talk about. Let me find him here. Ken, are you unfrozen? Uh, nope, he had to log off. So I'm going to bring on Brad. Let's go to Brad real quick. Brad, are you ready to go? <laughs> All right. I am. All right. Here's Brad on the screen. So Brad, talk to us. So this is Brad Payne. Welcome, Brad. Hey. And, uh, talk to us about some of the things that you would like to see. Um, and let me get to your slides for you. <clears throat> there you go um that you would like to see in the legislative uh actions and policy and bills welcome brad 
Well, I'll kind of take them in that order. Um, the defender legislators, of course, uh, after Brian's explanation of what a defender is, are those legislators who will uh, stand up for the values that Brian just discussed. And um, the vast majority we know of our Republican legislators stand for the majority of our values, uh, but it's it's giving them uh, the courage um, to speak up on those things. And quite honestly, in an election year, um, having had multiple discussions with multiple legislators, this is not going to be easy uh, in this year. It's an election year, and a lot of legislators are very uh, nervous um, or flat out opposed to speaking on values such as life and and the transgenderism issue and some of those things that are important to us. So um, although uh, privately, the vast majority of legislators would tell us that they stand with us on those values, getting them to speak up uh, on the floor um, may be uh, difficult this year. So uh, we continue to, to give them uh, bill opportunities to address some of those things and, and hopefully in the next 30 days, we can we can get some of those uh, to be debated in committee at the very least. Uh, same things with our policy and bills. Uh, we've come up with a number of bills. I'm not going to go into them uh, tonight, but uh, we have multiple different bill options that uh, reflect our values. Uh, the main thing I want to talk about real quickly is just the defenders in action. Um, one thing to sign that piece of paper and uh, become a defender, but the idea behind that is the inaction part, um, and we need action. And by that, I mean uh, primarily uh, number one would be getting out your votes because right now we're facing a 58 to 40 deficit um, in the House, a 29 to 20 deficit in the Senate, and uh, those numbers have to turn around. Um, very difficult, obviously, to pass any of our type of uh, bills that we're concerned about when we just don't have uh, the numbers in either chamber. So uh, using those ballot boxes, encouraging neighbors and friends, and coworkers and family members to get out um, and vote and, and be publicly uh, involved in this uh, race, helping those that are running uh, for positions, conservative positions, uh, in any way that you possibly can. The second most important thing would be uh, to let your voice be heard um, in the political process, and and probably the easiest way to do that, um, and Brian may go over that some with their handout, but the easiest way to do that is to register your position on bills. Starting uh, the first week of session, I'll be putting out a weekly update as we've done the past couple of years, and in that update will be links on every bill, positive and negative, uh, that we're going to follow. And when you click on a bill, you'll always have the option on any bill uh, to either support it or uh, oppose it, and there'll be links for that. So you're just simply going to click on a link uh, that says register my position on this bill, and you're going to get a pretty brief little short uh, page that the state legislator puts out that asks for your name, address, phone number. Um, you're going to click I'm not a robot, and then you're going to click on your pro or con position and uh, submit. And once you do that, it becomes an official part of the bill record, uh, whether in the House or Senate. And that's critical because legislators, uh, conservative legislators can then utilize those numbers um, in committee to uh, lay out how many people are opposed to a bad bill or how many people are in support of a good bill. Now, you also have the option to be able to um, write testimony and submit your position, um, or you can also testify in person or remotely. And those four options will be on every bill that we highlight uh, in this coming year. So uh, if you're up for testifying remotely or in person, that's great. Um, and if you feel like writing something out, that's, that's great. But at the very minimum, we want you to be able to register your position on as many bills as possible. It's about a 30 to 40 second um, procedure once you get the hang of it, and it's it's very easy to do. So there we go, any, unless we have any okay. questions. So. so we'll have all the training uh, on our, our on our website to do that, and so you're going to have a great time and getting people involved. And so here's how we picture it. We picture people in our churches doing small groups and uh, getting uh, Brad to come in and teach them how to register a bill, you know, and, and working with those so that they can um, 
so that they can begin to be active in the public square in, in a way that goes beyond just resetting an email. So there's some that will just send out a button that you repeat the email. Well, if, if a house rep gets a thousand emails, he can't, he or she can't necessarily take that to the floor. They can say that, but it doesn't weigh as much as these are registered positions on this legislation that will help us out. Um, Brad, thank you so much for jumping on here um, and, and for just working on our team. We're, we're glad that you're here. All right, I'm gonna mute Brad and pop him off. There we go. I'm learning all this technology as we go. Um, Keith is not feeling well tonight, but Keith is really gonna be working with our grassroots um, individuals and and uh, and just a lot working with whether it be a precinct committee officers or small business owners or people in education who are concerned about our culture. He will be working with them, and his team will be working with them. Uh, to move that those areas forward. Again, as a defender, we know that we need to defend our children. We need to defend women's rights. It's been amazing to me how fast uh, we have given up Title IX and other other things that are just really, um, you know, fought for in our culture that we've just given up because we want to be politically correct right now. And so to really step back and say, you know, a woman is a woman and a man is a man and they should have their own sports. They should have their own competitions. They should ha have their own bathrooms and their own showers and their own things. That's what Keith does. He works in those areas that we restore dignity in the public square and allow our kids to be kids uh, and, and to know that there's a difference between male and female. And then Ken, I think, is having trouble get on, getting on. Um, so Ken Ramey, Ken, are you on? Um, Ken Ramey, uh, he's having a little bit of trouble getting on, um, and maybe his internet speed, but he is making sure that pastors, elders, deacons, staff members are trained about the public square. He's introducing the small group series that we are putting out so that, um, so that, that people can be involved and be trained. You know, Deuteronomy says that we are to teach our children the principles of the Bible when they sit down, when they rise up, when they are walking along the street, you know, just the everyday life. And we can't outsource that to other people. And so giving practical things on, on gender, on, on, um, on what marriage is, on, you know, when life starts, on uh, why freedom is so important. Uh, you know, liberty is God's idea and freedom is God's idea. And so, we, we really want to uh, educate the next generation about stewardship, um, stewardship of these principles. And so um, we're going to do that through a small group system. And we are going to do train the trainers and let people get to educate those around, um, around them in their churches. And so that was the curriculum on the website that I quickly showed you under Public Square Ministry. And uh, we just started building all of this about eight weeks ago. Um, and so I guess one of the questions was how many, how many, um, defenders do we have as of right now? Well, it kind of depends on how you look at it. Um, in our database, we have 50 to 60,000 people in our database. And now we're, in lack of a better term, we're converting those to sign the defender application, right. To say, uh, as we go. And so I don't know what the, the, the numbers of signatures we have, but it's in the hundreds, uh, as we, as we get going. And, um, and we got to grow that rapidly because 2024 is coming up quick and, uh, and, and, and begin to move forward on that. So, um, uh, Travis, uh, if you want to unmute yourself, what other questions do we have? Yes. To follow up, we have about 300 defenders so far. Uh, we okay. just started and we're delighted at the feedback. Defenders is for those who want to stand on the front lines for life for marriage, uh, for parental rights, and religious liberty. Uh, it is rooted in the concept that we are stronger together as one voice. We can help empower uh, Brad, who uh, is an Olympia, as he meets with legislators. We can empower Brian as he meets uh, very important people across the state of Washington. So Defenders is available. It's a new program. Again, we're delighted uh, at the, uh, the, the feedback so far and look forward to many, many more hundreds signing up. Awesome. Any other questions come in that uh, as we go? We're, we're... Are, are you coordinating with other groups? Uh, the question reads, such as conservative women of, of Washington. 
Uh, what about other allies in the cultural battle? Yes, and so the the answer is uh, yes, we are coordinating with them. Um, the the one that was mentioned, uh, which conservative ladies of Washington, we have not uh, met with them yet, but EWA, Eastern Washington, um, and other uh, groups, uh, the Spokane GOP, um, and um, Pierce County GOP. I'm, I'm looking for prompts because I'm trying to remember the ones that we've met with. Um, so, but the answer, the simple answer is yes, we are coordinating with other groups, uh, and we will co coordinate with other groups to to move this process along, and really stand together. We're trying to we're trying to uh, make sure that the church is engaged, and they're making sure oftentimes that the grassroots uh, PCOs are engaged as well. Great question, great question. Any, any other questions? You're good. Go ahead. Okay. So the final thing I wanted to show you, I'm going to pop back over here and share my screen again, um, is uh, uh, Travis, let me know if you're getting the website again. Yes. OK, so is this uh, what what Brad was just referring to is this um, uh, how to register your position? I. If you click and you download this, so I didn't insert the PDF into the PowerPoint. So if I do it, it's not going to show up. But if you click and you download this, it's going to show you the seven steps that Brad was just describing that are very easy uh, to do. And um, now you need to understand something. We are not in session. So that that link that's in there will be live come January. Um, but it, you can begin to, to know how to do that very simply and let your voice be heard. The other thing I wanted to make sure that we understood was is that under the public square ministry button, we wanna use a small group system. We wanna use uh, a mentor mentoring system. And so you can download these uh, and, and begin to, um, to ha have a public square ministry within your church um, and or community center. I mean, there are scriptures in here. Um, and so it, wherever that would be appropriate for you and uh, walk through the booklet. Um, and the booklet is a discussion-based booklet where you you read uh, a, a concept, an idea, you talk about it, uh, you read scripture, you talk about it. The only booklet we haven't uploaded that's up here so far is this one right here. We're, we're fi finishing the editing of that, um, that little booklet that the cover is going to change. But in, in the basic program, as we add more, you're going to discern where culture is now. You're going to grasp the biblical um, mm -hmm you know, foundation, you're going to engage the logic of the debate, and then you're going to learn how to debate that topic in the public square. And so this will all be through um, you you working with your, your group um, there as well. So I wanted to keep this to 45 minutes, and we just hit 47. So that's pretty good. Um, uh, maybe I rushed it a little bit. One of the things I would like to encourage you uh, with is to uh, let you know that we could always use your financial support. And so uh, on our website, there is a donate button and uh, the ability to give and invest in the future. We also can use your volunteer support and your other time and talents. And so when you go to the donate page at the very top, it says, uh, uh, it talks about a form that you can complete and it can tell us how you can volunteer, tell us how you can uh, be involved, uh, you know, what, what your skill set is. And some of you will be able to financially give, some will be able to give your time, some will be able to give your talent and treasures. So um, we just want to be able to partner with you. Um, I do I do ask that as we move forward, um, that that we realize that uh, we're, we're putting everything together, right? So as we as we do that, we need to give grace and mercy to each other and and uh, and to and to grow in those things together. So um Anyways, this is our first time trying this. Uh, there, there's a lot of you on. Uh, I appreciate your time tonight. Wanted to keep this to about 45 minutes. Um, and uh, we need you to be a defender. And our action steps are become a defender to tell us your time, your treasure, or your talent that you can share with us. Um, it's going to take financial resources. It's going to take um, a manpower to get this done. So um, if, you, if you're interested in working with us, um, give me a call. Uh, or Travis a call. We would love to do that. Um, I'm going to give you my cell phone. You can jot it down. It's 208-610-4762. That's 208-610-4762. Um, don't, don't all of you call me tonight, but you know, give, give me till Monday morning. But um, would love to hear from you and, um, and just work with you. 
um, and, and see what we can do together. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May this be a day of God's grace and his mercy and that you experience God's peace. God bless you.